the last thing obviously is market making principles. So market making principles are simply like time of day. You know, when is there an intraday influence? When do things that normally occur like market protraction, like Judas swings? Let's go back to uh, understanding the market structure and the shifts quarterly, okay? If you are looking for a way to systematically reduce everything down to a nuts and bolts, this is how I do things, this is how I follow this process, I'm not gonna do anything outside of these, these rule-based ideas, this is what you are trying to do. You wanna do this with your trading plan. Between April, May down into June, uh, you really want to be focusing on going short stock indices. The bigger moves, the cleaner moves are going to be on the sell side. Going long in the fall, going into the, they call it the Santa Claus rally, the Christmas rally. The market tends to create a little bit of a flurry run up higher going into the close of December. Now, with all the things going on in the world today, that's probably an invitation for it to not pan out this year. And if it does, it, don't let it be discouraged because I want you to go back through as many years as you got data to go back and look at it and you'll see it's there. It's there, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, okay? So doesn't it make sense for you to be focusing on one side of the marketplace where there's the tendency for it to move in greater magnitude, one direction, and lean only in that direction for your bias and narrative ideas for taking trades. Right away, you have filtered 80% of the bullshit that most traders fall victim to. You're not gonna push it hard in the summertime because it's the doldrums. Now there's opportunities to do that, but you're not gonna be pushing your high, you know, highest leverage. You don't wanna do that because there's a likelihood of it becoming choppy and messy. So time of day, you want to be focusing on if you're, say you're in the sell model, in the spring highs that go down to the summer doldrum lows, leading into the fall months low that starts to rally up into the close of the year. During the spring fall time period, I shouldn't say it like that, in the spring declining or sell model where it's likely to go lower on the daily chart and continuously drop lower, if you look at time of day, you can start studying and see that the London open between two o'clock and four o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, you will have a 70% likelihood of seeing the high of the day form. What would it look like? It will look just like that fucking model I gave for free on YouTube. You're gonna wait for some, some buy side liquidity to be taken. Then there's a shift in market structure. Wait for the fair value gap to form. Sell short in the fair value gap, hold it, minimum. Hold it minimum to New York Open. And then see if New York gives you a continuation where you can go in and maybe pyramid. That's a goal for you to do. Not go out there and start doing it right now. It's just something you grow into. That's where you, you have to have a model right now you work on. But what, what is your end objective? What are you really trying to do as a trader? I want to sell short the highs in the London session or buy long the lows in the London session and hold for the daily range. That's day trading. If you're doing anything less than holding for the daily range, you are intraday scalping. That's it. Now you can break that down into session swing trading where you're swinging the entire New York session or the London session and getting out before five o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. There's nothing wrong with that if that's your model, if that's what you want to do. And you don't want to do anything else because time of day and schedule, school, business, you know, your family life, you just don't want to be in front of the charts a lot of times. You can make a career just by doing session only. Two o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning, there's your three hours, that's it, you're done. Or work the 8.30 to 11 o'clock morning session in equities and be done. Don't trade the afternoon. Or trade. 1.30 to 4 as your PM session. That, if that's what you want to be doing, and that's the time that fits your, your window of opportunity, then there it is. The question is going to be, what can I do, ICT, if I can't do any of them? I don't know personally. Like, I, I don't know how to answer that because I don't fuck with Asia. It, it's very far and few between opportunities that form in Asia that I like. It's just, I just don't like it. Doesn't mean you can't find an opportunity there. I just don't have 
I don't have the confidence as a mentor to say you should do that. Okay, uh, you want to be in the highest order flow volume that's coming into the marketplace, which is London and New York session, and in the afternoon session too, in New York. So those three time periods are kind of like your three, you know, the three best times of when you want to be trading and why you should be doing it. So if you're using the time of day idea coupled with that cell model in the spring months going down in the summer months in stock indices, the ranges will be gravitating going lower. Now, not every single candle in the daily chart is going to be a down close. And that's another thing that neophytes do. They come in here and they think every candle is going to be a down close. But I thought it was you know, the bearish bias was going to you, you have to have other things, folks. And market profiles. Now, before I get any further with this one, <laughs> I am not talking about market profile. You know, where they do the little volume histogram, you know, on its side axis and they look for you know, point of control and all that stuff. That to me, no offense, corpse, but that's bullshit stuff to me. Like, I, I don't think there's any reason for anybody to do that stuff. But if you're making money with it, God bless you. I'm not here to detract or, or say anybody that's making money with it can't make money with it going forward. I'm just saying I don't personally subscribe to that. And I already know what your volume profile shit's going to say to you before you see it. So, market profiles. I have weekly profiles that I use and I use daily profiles. So what was that? I'm looking at the tendency for the market to do certain types of delivery. Uh, it'll make the high of the day in London and then go in consolidation the rest of the day in, in, in the New York session. Or there'll be a classic sell day where it'll run up, create the high of the day in London and then sell off all day long and go close somewhere close to the low of the day. Or a classic buy day where it creates the low of the day in London and then rallies all throughout the day and then closes near the high of, the, of that, particular, you know, that particular day. There's seek and destroy where it's a day that looks like a really good trading opportunity and all of a sudden it hands you your ass. It starts chopping back and forth. As soon as you, as soon as you even think it's a seek and destroy day, you stop trading, turn the charts off, walk away. I have blown accounts in bonds. I have blown accounts in s and and I've blown accounts in Forex, getting caught in seek and destroy days, pushing it, thinking I'm, I'm going to be able to come out of what I was doing and making it worse. So one of the best things you can do is in all of your studying, really put focus on days where you see it going higher, high, lower, low, higher, high, lower, low, higher, high, lower, low. And then all of a sudden, later in the day, it takes off and just blows out one other range. And that's seek and destroy. Like nobody's allowed to be making money in that day. And that's just, that's hard. It's demoralizing when you fall victim to it. And I have done it. I've done it. And unfortunately, there are times where I don't know when it's going to creep in. But here's how you know when it's likely to. It's going to be right before a big like FOMC day. It's going to be before a rate announcement type thing. Um, some kind of high impact news driver where the market participants are going to get cleaned out. And why would that happen? Think about why that would take place. Why would you expect it to happen? Because traders are going to do what? They're going to take a position before the report or whenever that big volatility news driver is going to you know, hit the marketplace and create these big CPI runs or like we saw in non-farm payroll yesterday, where it was one-sidedness and it was a big 60 handle move drop right just like that in one minute. There are people out there that want to participate in that and they subscribe to their opinion and they want to get in the day before. Well, I admire, I admire their, you know, their courage. <laughs> it's rewarded with pain because this is exactly why that seek and destroy profile will manifest itself because that report is anticipating or in the minds of traders with that report, they're all anticipating a big move and everybody has an opinion. A lot of people are going to have a bullish opinion. A lot of people are going to have a bearish opinion. So for good measure, the algorithm does what? It does takes the initial short-term little intraday high out, brings people in when breakouts going long, and then it goes down and takes out a short-term low, knocking out their stop loss that went long and tripping in new traders going short with a breakout strategy. Then it goes back up to that short-term high it just formed and cleans that out. So now 
those that went short from up there and were lucky, now they're out of the marketplace. And it keeps doing that same thing all day long. Every high is taken out. Every low is taken out. That's seek and destroy. Nobody gets to participate in that move. And as soon as you recognize that happen or that happening in the, in the marketplace, maybe you forgot about the economic calendar. Maybe you didn't pay attention to what's likely to occur tomorrow. That is when seek and destroy is likely to occur. Or it can happen intraday before the FOMC, which is why I tell my students don't trade FOMC because you're likely to get caught up into a seek and destroy day before the two o'clock rate announcement comes out and then here it goes one direction and you wait for it because FOMC is always a two-stage event. There's the initial move that's usually fake and the real move is the opposite direction. So these are conversations that are just too fucking good for a book. <laughs> okay, they're just too good for a book. And I know these people that like to take my shit and rebrand it and all, they're, they're gonna take this stuff and they're gonna include it in a little Amazon real quick books and shit. And they're not gonna credit me, but you've heard me here talk about it. And it's in my mentorship stuff too. But market profiles are little templates that I have in my own personal study identified what the general characteristics look like and how that weekly profile should look. When is the weekly low likely to form? When is the weekly high likely to form? What is the overall characteristic of that weekly range going to look like if we were looking at it over, like, say, a 15-minute chart or an hourly chart? What would that perspective look like if we turn it into a line chart? And I spent a lot of time as a younger man trying to come up with ways like that. And what inspired me was uh, Larry Williams had a idea that was a uh, trading day of the month. Okay. And what he had was this little – every month he had the S&P broken down and, and the bond market broken down. And, man, I'm telling you what, like there were times where it was like spot on. It was like a seasonal tendency for those individual two, um, two markets that were showing you like critical key turning days. And if it was like you know, the fifth trading day of the month, it would create a high and then it would sell off for this many days. Man, I shit you not. This this shit was like I repped that shit like crazy. And my older folks that uh, that were with me when I was on America Online, um, Gate Trader, who is the guy that won in 2000 the stock division on Robin's Cup, the 24% return, <clears throat> which was respectful back then. Uh, Gate Trader was a, one of my original students when I was on America Online. And there's another guy, Chansom, okay, um, guy up in Alaska. He actually just um, he made, I think he made his way into my last mentorship group. Uh, him and his son are going through it together. But uh, they know that I was repping that shit back then, and I was fascinated with it. And I thought that it was like next level shit. So I said, okay, well, if, I don't know how he did that shit. He said he crunched numbers and ran all the, you know, what the market did for this many years, and, and he came out with that output. And I did see it fail sometimes. I mean, it, when it when it failed, it was you know like anything else. But when it was on, it was so good. It was very similar to what I just outlined here for the yearly range, okay? So I gave you the entire map for every single year. Why do you teach that you ought to be under your wing for a year, Michael? Michael, tell me why I got to subscribe to your bullshit for a full year to learn how to trade. I just told you in this video up to, or this discussion right now. Because if you don't see it and you're not walked through it with a hand holding, which is what I did in my private mentorship, you can't see it. You won't, you won't appreciate how it is consistent. And this is the reason why when I gave my analysis in private mentorship, it's 90% accurate. It's logged and ain't a fucking person can say anything about it because it's all been witnessed. It's all there. It's recorded. It's live. It's there all before it happened. And I used the things I'm talking about right here. So I went from using his idea that he was building these little like seasonal tendencies for each individual month to okay i want to know what does the weekly range look like on average and i knew i wouldn't get one that matches everything because everything's going to look different but i want to reduce it down to what type of weekly range would it look like and what tends to repeat a lot and those templates is what i share in my core content now <clears throat> the problem is students that see those things they want me to be able to say this is what that template's going to be this week when i need monday's trading 
And then I want to see what Tuesday's doing. So it's a matter of knowing what's occurring right then and there. Like I got to be in it. Like I got to, I got to be in there trading. Now there are other times where if you're in those seasonal times, like in the spring to summer months where it's likely to go lower, I'm many times able to say, okay, because of the economic calendar, the way the economic calendar is, and there's a lot of impact news on Wednesday or Thursday. Well, what does that mean? Look at your templates in that core content. Which one has a higher low forming on that Wednesday or Thursday template? And that's the weekly template you're going to be following probably for that week. That's it. I just gave it to you. And if it doesn't pan out, you just eat it. It's a loss like anything else. It's a cost of doing business. But you're going to find that it's almost like fucking fortune telling. It's it's weird. It's weird how it just pans out. But <clears throat> it takes a lot of courage to, to, to see that and experience. You're not going to be able to just look at it and say, oh, I figured this out. It's going to be so easy. You got to do this. It's, it's, this is a lifestyle and you'll learn. And then I went to studying how I can do this on an intraday basis. So I had intraday templates or market profiles or little tendencies for the market to do certain little patterns and, and delivery of price. I put it in that type of format too. And you see that in the day trading portion of the core content. So I'm looking at days with the expectation it's going to deliver a certain way. Now, I'm not saying I'm 100% right. I'm not even claiming to be 90% right in that regard. But I know if I fall victim to a intraday profile that I'm trying to trade, if it fails, I know which one it's going to go to if I fail there. And it's a matter of experience and knowing how to navigate that. But narrative is knowing how it's going to use one of those templates. And that's what makes this complicated. And it's easy for people to say, fuck this, it's too hard. He makes it complicated. No. If you want laser guided precision, it's going to take some fucking effort and it's going to put some, put some wrinkles on you. Okay. It's going to gray some of your hair. That's just what I require because that's the way I'm wired. I want something that's next fucking level outside the reach of the common person or trader. That's why when you see me executing, that shit is next to flawless. And you can't get those results with this retail horseshit renamed. It doesn't exist anywhere else. It does not exist. And these fucking jokers that say, oh, it's supply and demand. It's not supply and demand. These, these things I'm teaching you are highly specific. They're very specific. It's not an open range that you fucking figure out where you're going to be buying or selling at. Here's your zone. Which Where, where are you buying in that zone? Sam don't even teach you that. <laughs> Sidon. So, that logic, while in its infancy, is better than support and resistance, but it's still lacking. And you have to be precise about why are you buying here? And if you don't know where you're buying and why you're buying it, how the fuck can you put your stop loss in an effective place and know that it ain't going to get hit? Look at the trade examples I show you. You see, oh, he's got a $3,000 stop loss there. Whew, that's a lot. Look at the profit target. It's always more than three. Always more than three times. Sometimes more than that, sometimes five, sometimes 10. Don't get caught up with the numbers. Look at the logic I'm showing you, why I'm putting my stop loss where I'm putting. It's exactly how I teach it. The algorithm's gonna respect that. You, you see, oh man, he's putting a stop loss right there. I couldn't do that because you haven't been doing this long enough and you haven't adopted what? The experience of seeing it. I've handled this stuff for 30 years. I've, I've been in it. For three decades, I've seen this shit pan out so many times. I know how to trust it. And if I lose, if I lose at it, it's not a big deal. I know that it will repeat again. And if I took a loss, I can get that back easily. It's easy. Losing is hard for a neophyte. It's, it's impossible to get through a losing set of trades as a new student. You need encouragement. You need to be able to be around other people to, to say, hey, look, I've been there too. And that's one of the benefits of being in a community like this because I don't want you all to simply saying, here's where I made money, high five ICT. That's cool. A lot of people like to see that. I like seeing it. It, it, it fluffs my ego. I ain't going to lie to you. It feels good to see my students doing well. But I also really want to see folks share where they're fucking up. What they're doing wrong, because not only will it be an opportunity for you to get me replying to you saying you did this incorrectly and you should have been focusing on that. You'll learn from it and other people will learn from that. But you're all afraid 
to show what would I open this whole presentation out with? You don't you don't want to show your weaknesses. You don't show where you've done it wrong. And that's where the learning occurs. You don't learn anything when you did it right. That's sugar-coated. That's candy-coated bullshit. You're not going to constantly win. You're going to lose. You're going to lose money. You're going to do it wrong. And how are you going to take that? Are you going to lose your shit and lose your mind about it? And, oh, man, i got to go back in right away and do 